Let's talk about the buzzword that everyone is talking about, and that is the helpful content update. It was called the helpful content update. Helpful content update. But helpful content update. For the Google helpful content update. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you should be structuring your sentences and also your website to be more helpful. A lot of websites that I've seen get hit have been mainly focusing on monetizational keywords. Now, one thing you also need to take into consideration when looking at helpful content on your website is if your website is plastered with ads and it has loads of affiliate tables and it takes four minutes to find the simple answer on the page then that's probably not the most helpful content to be displayed to a user one thing you need to also take into consideration is the ux and ui of your website you see when people talk about helpful content people automatically assume how accurate and factual is the content but there's still a lot of pages that are non-factual such as reddit and quora that are ranking for big keywords however if you actually look at the user friendliness of some of those pages some of them don't have ads for example reddit some of them you can get the answer very quickly and concise as possible from those forums what you need to be doing when you're evaluating content is understanding how people react with your website say for example if you have a 4000 word article and the first 3000 words is main body content and the last 1000 is just faqs now if one of those faqs gets some serious traffic but it's three and a half thousand four thousand words down the page people don't want to scroll all the way down the page to get that answer people want a very concise answer so in some cases what you might need to do is restructure your content now for the next part of this video to make sense we need to understand just a little bit about technical seo and also on-page seo as well now for anybody that doesn't know who kyle roof is kyle roof is the owner of page optimizer pro Page Optimizer Pro essentially tells you any edge analysis that you are missing on your website. Kyle is also known for ranking in extremely hard industries just by using lorem ipsum content. Now, one thing that Kyle has always spoke about is how much of a page is actually crawled for the very first time by Googlebot. And you would be surprised to know that it's not actually that much. The first time Google actually crawls your website, what it might take a look at is your page title, your meta description, your H1, and maybe two or three sentences. And then it will decide if it wants to come back or not. Google doesn't crawl the entire web page when it's first uploaded. What it actually takes a look at are some key elements, such as your meta title, your meta description, your H1, and in some cases, your first few paragraphs. Then it will make a decision if it wants to come back to this page and actually index it. So it's it's crawled the page but it's not actually indexed it just yet so that means that keywords higher up the page or lsis higher up the page actually hold more weight than being lower down the page so when you're using certain tools such as surfer seo and phrase what you actually need to be making certain of is that certain keywords higher up the page actually yield more weight than being lower down the page so now that we know that information what we want to do is take a look at a couple websites so this is dirtbikeplanet.com i'm just taking a look at one of their random pages this website has been hit by the helpful content update so one thing to take into consideration that their offer box here is on the right hand side that is talking about dirt bike planet if we were to take a look at the code so some of you guys might not be techie however if we were to look at this website like how google looks at it as you can see here this is the main body content here so all of this needs to get picked up by Google first and then after it's crawled all of this then it gets to your secondary widget area which is on the sidebar so anything in the sidebar here actually has less weight than in the main body content so if they were to get a expert dirt bike specialist on this website google first of all needs to crawl this entire page and also look at any ads if they did have ads in the main body content and then once it's crawled this entire main body content then it gets to the sidebar so anything here actually has less weight now if we were to take a look at another website so if we were to take a look at eatingwell.com these guys have done tremendously well after the helpful content update 
And if we were to take a look at where they have positioned their offers, it isn't actually in the sidebar. So they're not playing hide and seek with their offers. It's very transparent who has actually written the article when it was last updated. And it was also reviewed by a dietitian as well. So it is very clear from the word go when you land on this website, who has written the article and also who's reviewed the article as well. What you need to be doing when you're evaluating your web pages is asking yourself this, have I created this page to keep people as long as I possibly can on this page? Or am I answering the questions as concise as I possibly can? Personally, whenever I want an answer to my question, I don't want to be scrolling through 18 paragraphs, five photos, two videos to get to my answer. I want a concise answer and a correct answer. Otherwise, if I need to scroll through blocks of content, hundreds of ads, I'm just going to bounce off your website. Okay, in this example, what I'm going to be showing you is how to regain some snippets. If you've lost any featured snippets, try this method and see if you can regain them. Now, what I have done here is I have just searched how to stop a leaking radiator. And as we can see, only radiators.co.uk is ranking in position one. Now, what we're going to do is check the featured snippet queue. So what we want to do is grab this domain and stick it right at the end of our query and do minus. So what we're telling Google is show me results on how to stop a leaking radiator excluding this website. So if we click search again, what we will see is homebuilding.co.uk. So they are currently second in the featured snippet queue. So if we were to take a look at onlyradiators.co.uk, so this is what is getting the featured snippet in the UK. These guys are currently second. So how to fix a leaking radiator valve. All they've mentioned is stop water flow, drain the radiator, add PTF e-tape, refill the radiator. Now, if we were to take a look at what is actually ranking, drain the leaking valve before the leak, turn off the supply, lock shield valve, catch the water that escapes, undo the union nut, open the bleed valve to release water, wrap the valve tip in PTFE tape, retighten the union nut and open the bleed and lock shield valves, allow your radiator to fill up again, check there are no leaks and close the bleed valve. So as you can see, even though that they have less information on this page about the steps, they are actually providing a lot more value than these guys. So that's example number one. Now let's take a look at example number three. If we were to take these guys and minus homebuilding.co.uk and let's take a look at who's third in the featured snippet queue. So let's take a look at bestheating.com. So if we load up the page, as we can see, they've actually went to detail with the actual amount of images that they have on the website and they have done a pretty decent job. Now, one thing that I would like to mention about the two previous results is both of them were numbered lists that is pulled in. So if I were the owner of this website, what I would be looking to do is adding numbers to my subheadings and seeing if Google prefers that format a little bit more, because right now it just seems to be getting a little confused and it doesn't know where to grab the featured snippet from. So that's one thing that you should be taking into consideration. Look at what's actually ranking. Is it an answer summary or is it a numbered list or is it a bullet point list or is it a HTML table? And add what is actually preferred in that snippet to your page. If say, for example, position one has a HTML table and you don't have a HTML table, guess what? You're going to need a HTML table. If position one has a bullet pointed list and you don't have a bullet pointed list or you have a numbered list, try changing the format to a numbered list, match the intent and see what's missing on your website. Instead of thinking how helpful is this page, think of how helpful your entire website is. Let's say for example, you have a travel website. Are you just publishing articles that say best hotels in XYZ location? Or are you actually mentioning how to get to those hotels? There might be certain transport that you can take that's cheaper. You need to be covering the topic in its entirety. In some cases, you might not be able to monetize those pages, but you're providing value to the user that's landing on your website. I've seen a lot of websites get hit lately and all they're focusing on is review products, 
and roundup pages. And that's not actually providing any value because there's hundreds, if not thousands of websites that are already doing that. You need to be bringing something new to the table. Websites like that are deemed as doorway pages. Why would Google want to serve your website for best hotels in Mallorca if they already have that information using Google My Business data? You're just deemed as a waste of time or a waste of crawl budget to Google. What I want you to go and do now is go and take a look at your website. Go and take a look at some pages that have dropped and actually take a look and see is this serving the value that people want? Is it actually providing the intent? If a user has to scroll four miles to get to their answer that they search for, it's probably not a good user experience. What you should be doing is looking to serve the answer as quickly as possible. And in some cases, that might mean breaking off the actual content onto a separate page or potentially moving parts of your content further up the page. Now, one thing to also take into consideration is if you were to enable comments on your website is when people post a question, they will get an email notification and ultimately they will come back to your website when somebody answers their questions on your website, which ultimately means that there is more dwell time on your pages. That's also another thing to take into consideration when you're looking at certain websites like Reddit and Quora. As always, take action and I'll see you in the next episode.